It's great to catch up with Sean again as we talk in all things solar, but I actually did my solar installation in completely the wrong order. I just rang you and begged you to come within three weeks, <laughs> which is not the normal process, is it, Sean? No. So when we're thinking about that process, I would imagine once you've had the phone call, you've turned up on site, the words that will come out of the mouth is, how much is my solar installation going to cost? But you don't start there, do you? No. So every solar system will vary depending on what the client has, depending on roof space and also what their requirements are. Right, let's go through that process. Now, let's think of the house that we actually did it here in. So we've got a three bed townhouse that we're gonna do our install in. Of course, I'm only interested in that price, but what's the first thing we're gonna actually have to look at? And what does MCS recommend we do this sort of order in our, of our actual install? So it'd be uh, measuring the roof. Obviously, we're quite lucky when we turn up to yours because uh, we already had some scaffolding up. Measuring the roof because we need to work how many panels can go on there? Yep, that's right. Okay, so how important is the number of panels based on the decision whether people go for a solar installation? So depending on how many panels we can get on there, we can and then work out your total kilowatt peak that we can fit on that space. And then we look at uh, how much energy you use and then we can compare the two. And then we obviously take in consideration of pitch, shading and irradiance. And which way the roof is pointing as well, isn't it? Yeah. So, so mine was nice and simple, wasn't it? It was obviously pointing in a southerly direction. Obviously, I was already going to have solar, which is the wrong way of looking at it. Understanding your energy consumption has got me to the position I am now. And that's why I think this conversation would have been so super important, actually, before the install, because I didn't have a clue how much energy I was using. And now when I look on my smart meter, I'm seeing around about 10 kilowatts per day. Yeah. It will depend on the time of year. We are later in the year at the moment when we're filming this. But my solar array can produce a maximum output of about is it 2.6 yeah. okay so that that's uh, okay that sounds good at the moment because i'm not going to be drawing all my 10 kilowatts in one moment in time but does this link to a decision whether people then are not just going to have a solar install but actually add in the batteries yeah so if you're a very low user which you are and so your base load is very very low during the summer months you'd have a lot of surplus energy throughout the daytime when obviously so you've got a choice either that energy goes back to your energy provider and they might give you some pennies yeah toward your export but ideally you want to keep that energy for yourself yeah and, and this comes back to that obviously conclusion was i only had one battery because we were doing this install in a, in a big rush yeah i didn't understand how much i was using and i selected one battery and i quickly found out it wasn't it up. yeah it wasn't <laughs> enough was it 10, 10 30 11 o'clock in the morning it yeah. was um, yeah full up for the rest of the day yeah absolutely and, and because you're out and all the rest of it. The, the issue i had then was i was coming home with a full battery which you get all excited you think great yeah but it wasn't actually enough at five kilowatts to power me all the way through to the morning when the sunlight was coming back out again. Yeah. So, so I then you, went so back you're coming home from work, usual time, sort of five, six o'clock, and then you're going to cook in a very high demand in those sort of couple of hours. So yeah, your battery will, 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 will take a beating. So I didn't maximize what I should have done. So our conversation, would you have led me to two batteries at this stage? Yeah. Yeah, you would have done. And that's why we've obviously added a second battery in. That's not exactly all the information because I also took out your decision of where the location of the inverter and battery was going to go as well, didn't I? Yeah. Now, where's your ideal location for those? Ideally, if you've got the space in a garage. Okay, I haven't got a garage. Okay, okay. well, I have, but it's, <laughs> it's some distance yeah. from the property. It's about so, 25 yeah. meters away. Yeah, yeah, so we can't do it from there. There's no power there. So we can't do anything with the garage. Yeah. So option number one's garage. Okay, so this would be a conversation piece. Still, before you give us the price, we want to pick the best location. It looks to me like loft. Your cables are up there. You've only got to get up to it. Surely the loft's our first uh, port of call if we haven't got a garage. No, we're trying to avoid the lofts okay. if we can. Uh, one, for heat. And two, obviously, for a homeowner, if you ever need to get to the equipment, you need to do it in a safe way. If anything needs to be isolated or if you need to go up and check anything, yeah, you wouldn't. Add, obviously, the older you get, it becomes uh, less easier. <laughs> So, um, yeah, all we'd expect it, customers to be able to sort of climb up into loft and say, oh, can you tell me if yeah. if, if there's a problem with this, this and this? Or, or uh, isolate it for some reason. Maybe yeah. you've got a warning sign uh, you're on your phone or your app, it's yeah. beeping away and you've got to isolate that. And again, that's not an easy thing to do. So when we looked at mine, and we've done it retrospectively, now I, I pre-wired it as well before you came, which is a first for your order. <laughs> Very handy. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. Now I chose my downstairs plant room, okay, mm -hmm. which has also a toilet and a basin in there. Now looking at it retrospectively, was there a better area we could have done it? Uh, I don't think so. Would you recommend if you had enough room under the stairs to put one under the stairs? Uh, no, don't put anything under the stairs. No, because obviously if that catches fire or there's a fire issue in that area, not necessarily from the solar uh, inverter, but if there was an issue, obviously that's the staircase coming down. We're trying to avoid a lot of electrical stuff under stairs. I know a lot of people will have their consuming unit located under there. That's not a good idea. No. And that's how our, our thought process has gone. So I probably chose a, a decent-ish location for it to obviously happen in, which was good. So that was probably the only tick I think I got in the whole of this system <laughs> as we went through. And now we're at the point where we've got to decide about the electrical system and we've got to look at what we've got. What sort of things might need upgrading before you can have your solar inverter and battery storage installed? Consuming it. Okay. So 
house consumer units are normally full up. So yeah, we normally need at least two to three spare ways, depending on what system. And maybe possibility of surge being installed at the incoming installation. It's a good idea with the amount of electronic equipment being added. Yeah, so type two. Bonding, do you have to look at the bonding? Is it the same as any circuit you've installed in checking that the gas and water services are also earth? So there's some other things in there that cost that the customer might not have considered. Yeah, it's all of extra cost. Yeah, obviously cable runs is, is a big one. Yeah, obviously, yeah, if you've got a change of consumer unit, that's an additional cost. What about smoke or heat detectors? Uh, yeah, recommended. A heat detector now in the downstairs plant room. There wasn't one there before. Obviously, yeah. there's one outside of it, but there has to be one on the right in the location that you've installed it. Yeah. So that's probably on nearly every job, something that's going to have to go in. It's very rare you're going to find one of those maybe in the house in the right location. Yeah. Yeah, so these are all considerations. So these all go Obviously part they all of need to be linked as well. So okay. that's yeah. another, yeah. yeah, it could be quite time consuming. Yeah, so in other costs. words, yeah, so when one goes off, all the, all the smoke off. or heat detectors go off at the same time. So all of these considerations are going in. So we're looking as we've gone through. And at this stage, the customer is still desperate to hear the price because that is probably the one thing they think is the deal breaker. Yeah. But let's imagine I've got a north facing roof that I can only get four panels on. Mm -hmm. How short is the conversation with the customer then? Obviously, it'd be a recommendation that it, it's not going to generate enough. They might st still be willing to go for it. But obviously, we'd strongly recommend against it. So then we'd look at other options. So maybe a battery option or battery only option. Okay, so um, I, I like this one. I think a lot of people skip over this because you want to generate your own electricity. There's something oops. quite special about having your own panels and your own power plant. But when we think about people who, who have got a very small roof or flats, flats yeah. you know, they can't benefit from cheap off-rate tariffs unless they've got the ability to have storage or something like that. Yeah. But a battery-only solution puts them back in the game, doesn't it? Yeah. So talk me through, you know, I've, I've got a three-bed flat. Mm -hmm. What's the customer going to be looking at then in order to size their batteries? Is it the same conversation we just had? Yeah, so again, we'll look at what they use on a, on a daily basis and then we can size the battery from there. Most flats come with sort of economy seven or they will have a cheaper rate if they've got storage heaters. Yeah, yeah they will. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so, so again, they can maximise charging up on a cheaper rate and then discharging throughout the data. And when it comes to cost, would you break down the cost, say, if we, we layer it up, so we do perhaps battery only, yep. battery solar, and then we can start thinking about adding to that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Have we got the ability with this excess energy that could occur if we've filled our batteries up on a really nice day, have we got the ability to divert the energy maybe into a hot water system? Energy diverters, and then also we can look at, might have an EV, and then they look at solar, so then they're looking at integrating both, or some people might want to be going solar and then thinking about getting an EV at a later date. Whether you then go for a home battery or whether you use, if you've got a giant battery out on, out on the road on wheels, yeah. you'd want to maximise filling that up before your house battery. You know, someone's at home working from home, it's very common now, and your car's out there, there's probably no reason to have home batteries because you can divert the additional energy into charging your car and take the benefit that way rather than storing it. Because I imagine if you had an EV came home, I've got now just about 10 kilowatts, 10, yeah. and I'd plug like straight in, <laughs> that'd be it. <laughs> It'd be complete, yeah, depleted yeah, very, very shortly. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's working out what's, what's best for you against costs, um, but then again, obviously you can sort of mani manipulate that if you You've got a, an EV tariff, maybe. So you then set your car for charging on those cheaper four hours. Again, you could do, use your house battery. Yeah, but and, we do try and yeah recommend to clients, and obviously not rip people off either. No, and I think that's what the MC MCS sets it out, doesn't it? That you have to go through all these stages. You have to tell them what the expected return is for twelve months. So. Yeah, so you have to yeah, so we have to estimate it to generate, and we have to, we have to state that. So we have to take um, right. yeah, your pitch, um, shade in, uh, irradiance all into that, and we'll get a, a figure of what your sort of estimated to generate. Oh, so is that like a modelling software? Is it that will tell yeah. you what that is based on where your location is? Yeah, MCS has got all oh, the information. Right, so we, yeah, we basically calculations and we can work it all out. So you can tell me what I can earn in a year, and then we can multiply that up to work out when I've actually paid back for my system. That's it. And the paybacks are, are completely different, obviously, depending on where yeah, we are. Yeah, depending on how much you spend in, and then yeah, how much you use. And, and for me, I think the, the key thing is it's panels, isn't it? Because the effort is exactly the same, <laughs> apart from a couple more panels. So if my roof had been bigger and I could have put a few more panels on, yeah. that would bring drastically down the, the payback time, won't it? I know so, we can talk about tariff prices for electricity, it keeps moving up and down all the rest of it, but it would have been a key factor, wouldn't it? Because I can only generate a maximum of, what is it, about 2.6 2. 2. Yeah, 2. kilowatts. Okay, is my maximum generated. You're probably never gonna get that. It's always you work on about two kilowatts mm -hmm. as my generation, but yeah, having more panels pushes you up. Now, the advantage of me having a new battery installed was I can actually discharge now at bigger it's than 2.5, right? yeah. so. When, when my system's working with the one, I think it's 5.32 kilowatts to be precise. I think I'm in the same 5.2 in the, the videos that we've done. But I can only 
come back out of that at 2.5 kilowatts. So if for some reason I had the oven on like I've done before and I'm juggling the uh, microwave and maybe now the air fryer, <laughs> which everyone knows new, once I get to that, say I've got a kilowatt of sun coming in, I can only do another 2.5 kilowatts out of the battery. Yeah. But and not with two, as well. Not with two though. Oh, I've got 3.6. And that's the maximum output, isn't it, for my inverter? So by adding that second battery in, I can jump out with 3.6 plus whatever the sun is at that time. That's a strong position to be in now. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to get caught out now juggling between different electrical appliances like wood and stone in the kitchen. But I didn't know any of that before this started. And these are these are conversations you have with all your customers prior to me then saying. How much is it going to cost? Yeah, because you'll be giving me probably three, at least three quotes on you. Yeah, normally we do a solar only, solar and battery, and then your extras, so your uh, hot water diverter yeah. and EV charger. Okay, as, uh, as a package. And most people want to future proof it, don't they? They want the ability to add them in, even if you started off with just you know the solar. Okay, yeah. just yeah. that way. It's all yeah, it's fine in that system as well, which you can add to. And again, another thing that maybe is a conversation for a customer mm -hmm. is you're really gonna be buying your energy or getting your energy free during a certain period of the year. So maybe from April to mid-September. Yeah. And then I'm now in a period of time towards obviously the, the end of a year. Darker days. Yeah, darker days. <laughs> uh, we tend to, our, our, days. our energy use goes up because of the lights and stuff like that are on more often. Okay, yeah. heating systems running, even if it's a gas one, you've obviously got the pumps and all the rest of it going round if you're on gas central heating. That your energy use creeps up, but actually the benefit from the sun at that time has been greatly reduced. Are you recommending people there maybe look at maybe charging their batteries on more of an agile tariff to yeah. maximise the actual batteries they might have installed? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you do have a battery, um, I'd always recommend trying to get them to a cheaper tariff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as soon as you get your batteries put in, because again, you can manipulate that. Yeah, we've done a video on that. I'll leave that link in the description. Gordon did it. He did it a bit like he was buying and selling shares. You were trying to sort of second guess where the energy market was going. Sometimes the tariff goes negative. Actually, you are paid to charge your batteries or use electricity on that agile tariff. And that would be something I'd definitely recommend people look at, mm -hmm. especially in these darker months. As you can well tell, it's quite great on me. But I've got a second battery. And if you want to see how that was installed, check out the video on screen there.